You know, we probably focus on what's going on in China, but don't forget about France. Don't forget about England. Uh, by the way, by extension, don't forget about Germany or Italy or Spain or Portugal. You're just looking at two of the leading players there in a world of financial hurt and their economies potentially going along with them. Let's get the read from a former IMF executive board member, Doug Redeker. Doug, very good to have you. How bad is this in Europe right now with France just reporting numbers that seem to indicate things are slowing down and not contracting over there? What do you think? Well, look, Europe uh, traditionally has been seen in the post-financial crisis world as lagging the U.S. recovery. We did a lot of pretty aggressive stuff right after the crisis, and we grew as a result. Europe did a lot of slow incremental things, and they grew a lot less as a result. The question was whether they were going to continue to grow even if we slowed down, and I think what we're seeing is, no, not so much. That doesn't mean that they're going to go into a recession. It doesn't mean that they're going to go and completely reverse the growth that we've seen. It does mean that you're not going to see this continued steady upturn in growth in Europe. You're probably seeing a leveling out, and that's not great, especially on the monetary policy side for Europe. Can we continue growing if they slow down? Look, I think there's a lot of things that are going to impact U.S. growth. One of them is going to be global growth, and one of the big components of, of global growth is Europe. But, boy, there's a lot of other things. I know we, you were talking earlier about, you know, China, U.S. Um, I, I would say the risks to the U.S. economy are not necessarily in the top two, three, or four going to come from European growth slowdown. I think mm. we've got a lot of other dynamics that are going to play out more for us. By the way, do you worry about this China thing and how it's, it's on many fronts, it's a little weird, but... It uh, depends on how you describe this China thing, but yeah, I worry about all of it. Um, I, I, I'm worried, but I think in general, if you look at what's happened, you've got Chinese growth slowing. You've got U.S. stock markets obviously reacting to the increasing risks of the trade tensions with China. And so you've got two leaders, whether it's President Trump or President Xi, who are both looking at their own domestic uh, forces, whether it's markets or growth, and thinking, eh, you know, maybe it's in my interest to kind of come to a deal, even if I'm not so pleased to do so on the substance. So I'm kind of, sort of, a little bit optimistic that there will be an incremental deal between President Trump and President Xi. That doesn't mean that it's going to solve the problems. I think this is a story that's going to go on for a long time. But in the short term, they'll probably find a way to ease tensions. All right. Uh, from, from your mouth. Doug, thank you very, very much. Good seeing you. Have a good weekend. You got it. You too.